Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And so today we have a very special episode. We are doing, we are doing Canadian ice wines. That's right, Canadian ice wines and dessert wines. And the reason I'm doing that was because I was trying to decide what is the furthest thing I can do from a heat episode. And you know what? Canadian ice wine seems to be as far away from a heat episode as possible. Which is why I'm bringing that up. The heat episode. Let me tell you what I'm planning on doing. I was going to do it today, but again, it's just not hot. The weather's not cooperating. Hopefully next week will work out. I have a windowsill right over here. We're going to show it to you and we're going to tape it. I'm going to take four wines and put it on the windowsill and let them get hot over two days. I'm going to also have those same exact four bottles on the ground and I'm going to let those not be heat damaged. Obviously, we will then take eight, all eight wines and we will taste them for you. And we'll see how they vary, see what the effects are, and talk about them. So, the heat episode is coming up, Tony and others. It's just we're going to have to wait for the proper weather, and right now it's not cooperating. Okay, Canada. Who knew, right? I mean, great beer, hockey, all that other stuff, WWF wrestlers, but they also are starting to make great, great dessert wine, specifically ice wines and Rieslings. So... I'm going to taste six of them today, as you can see. I'm really excited. I have a sweet tooth, and I'm going to enjoy this. So, wine number one, Henry of Pelham, Special Select 2004. And this right here is a very interesting dessert wine. This is a late harvest Vidal. Vidal is a grape we're going to be talking about quite a bit today, one that you may not be familiar with. You know, what's funny about Vidal, wow, is it's an Ugni Blanc mixed with a Saval Blanc grape. It's a clone of of those two unique grapes. And the reason Vidal is very prominent in the Niagara Falls area in Canada is because it has very thick skin. And what that really does is it allows it to really kind of combat the cold weathers and all the hustle and bustle ice wines have to go through to be made. So this is the first wine. It's a late harvest Vidal. So that is not an ice vine. This is late harvest. So this gets picked somewhere between four and eight degrees below zero Celsius. To be an official ice wine, it has to be between 12 and 15 degrees below Celsius. And it has to maintain that temperature for two to three days by Canadian law. And then they can pick the wines, and the grapes have to be below 8 degrees Celsius to be qualified to become a classified ice wine. What happens at that point is most of the juice inside the grape is frozen, except for about 10 to 15 percent of the juice. And that's what's pressed, and that precious liquid is what goes into that. And that's why the ice wines are very expensive on normal circumstances. So, we've given you the little lesson. Let's get into the wine. Late Harvest, 2004, Vidal. Great honeysuckle nose. Really nice. A little bit of um, apricot on the nose as well. Great fruit flavor. Very smooth. Nice little wine. Great for the money. Um, unfortunately, I did not do my homework on the price points of these wines, so you're going to have to look below right now. Hopefully it came across the screen already. But I think this one's about $15 or so. It's got really nice characteristic, very clean. A nice drink. Great for after dinner. I mean, just really, really nice dessert wine. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I'm going to score it in 88 to 89 points, maybe even a 9, you know, actually I'm going to even give it a 90. I mean, this is a nice little clever dessert wine, 11 and a half alcohol. Um, I enjoy it quite a bit. Really, really well made for the price. Let's move on. Now, this is the Henry of Pelham 2004 Riesling Ice Vine. So this is made from Riesling, and this is an ice wine. So this qualifies for the ice wine classification. Let's see what this is doing. Even more of a golden color. I mean, really golden. I mean, like Hulk Hogan hair golden. You know, I mean, this is just really right there. A little bit more closed than the uh, than a Vidal. Um, a little bit more chalky, which is quite interesting. Almost like a sweet chalk smell. Kind of smells a little bit like those honeycomb um, cereal, if you've ever had that. That comes off really obvious to me, actually. I really didn't want to spit that. Really culture palette, very thick, very juicy. I like this wine quite a bit. You know, had I not been rating wines by price, 
uh, if I kept doing that, I would have hacked show. You'd have to stop this episode because I'm not sure what this is priced. But now that I'm just tasting wines and rating them based on their quality, I'm going to have to score this wine to 91 to 92 points. I really enjoy the quality of this. Very high quality. I mean, very thick wine. Obviously, a big step above the late harvest Riesling, in my opinion. Late harvest Vidal, excuse me. In my opinion, this Riesling ice wine is a winner. Really obvious apricot and sweet peach kind of flavor. You know, that when you get a real sweet peach and you bite bite in, that's just coating your entire palate. This is delicious. I mean, you can get drunk off this in a hurry. I mean, I could drink this entire bottle in the next 25 seconds. It's just that good. It's like fruit juice. You may notice I'm using a lot of water today because obviously these wines are extremely thick and I just want to get away any of the residual flavors from the last one that I can. Cobb Springs from Niagara, 2004, Riesling Ice Vine. Very, very good producer. I've been a big fan of Cobb Spring in the past. I'm going to give it a little rinse. I really don't want to get any of the other flavors. I mean, again, I'm really excited to do this episode. Because what I think I'm doing here with this episode more than anything else is I'm not really sure how many people have ever had Canadian ice wines in the past. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm sure you had Chateau de Cam or other Sauternes or other great dessert wines. But if you've never had a great wine from up north, you have to. These are some of the best products in the marketplace. And I still think, and I hope that Wine Library TV one day gets big enough where I can do things like this. But at this point, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to make the prices go up too much. Not enough people are watching. I'm going to tell you a secret. These wines are ridiculously underpriced. They're just ridiculously underpriced. I mean, these some of these top wines could be, you know, two, three hundred dollars a bottle, and they're still ranging in that fifty to sixty dollar range. And then you get into the first two wines, fifteen to twenty, forget it. Now this is a whole different story right here. This is very kind of kind of complex. This is a little bit more. Doesn't have the overwhelming sugar flavors to it. It's a little bit more uh, sour flavors. I, I don't want to say that as a negative. But it's more almost vegetal in a way. It's kind of different. You know, ice wine goes way back to Germany in 1794 is when it was discovered. So, you know, you may have to Google me on that. But, you know, I mean, we're talking about a tradition of ice wines that has been going on forever. And Canada is now really the lead horse in this. I mean, some German fans are going to email me and bash me. I mean, it's a real tight race. The Canadian quality is very high. melon, little honeydew flavors, much more firm tannin than the first wine. This is not just pure sugar water kind of flavors that the first two kind of came off. You know, I would score this wine 92 to 93 points. I'm, I'm very high on this. Um, this is just a great drink. I mean, I'm just blown away. People tend to rate, if you look at wine critics like Parker and Spectator, dessert wines a little higher. And you know what? That's because we all like sugar at some level. I mean, these wines are really sweet, and I find I get tricked as well. I mean, you know, this is a very complete and complex wine, but it's just sweet, delicious, lovable. You can pour it on ice cream. This is fun stuff. I mean, this is good juice. And uh, this is just slightly a little bit better than the last two, so I will go 91 and a half for fun. Again, a Riesling, which is a thinner grape, you know, than the Vidal, which tends to make a little bit of a lighter, less complex ice wine. It's also a wine that has difficulties, so these wines tend to be pretty expensive because a lot of the skins break and the wines, you know, basically aren't being able to be produced. There's low yields. I mean, there's a very complicated process on the ice wines. Yeah, I even had to swallow a little bit. Just great, great stuff. All right. Let's move on. This is my good friend Jackson Triggs, 2004 Vidal Ice Vine. Small little bottle. And, uh, you know, just a, a great, this is the Reserve, 2004. Great producer. I mean, we're starting to get into some serious colors. I mean, this is really dark orange. I hope it's coming across at all. I mean, it's really, really quite cool. I mean, you're talking, you know, bourbon colors soon. You know, one step below bourbon. And holy cow, this is awesome. What is this? This is just like peach marmalade. I mean, it's just, you know, these are delicious dessert wines. Yeah, peach marmalade. Again, a lot of peach, you know, in these wines. This even has a little hint of, a little hint of, you know, kind of like a, a little bit of tobacco, which is kind of wild in a, in a, in, 
tobacco. No, it's more like like oil. It's kind of like mechanical, kind of, you know, something you'd smell in a body shop. I mean, you may not think that that sounds great, but you know what? If you went to an auto body shop and pelted it with 4,000 peaches, that's the smell you're going to get with this. And I think that's a pretty good analogy, and I honestly think that you'll enjoy that, and you'll get the sense of where I'm coming from with this. Because that's exactly what this smells like, that. You know, if anybody out there is a cartoonist and wants to make a cartoon of that and send it to me, I'd love to see it. This is the hardest episode of Wine Library TV ever because I want to drink all this stuff. Um, once again, coats the palate, really complex, very viscous, very heavy. This one you really can pour on... Uh, on uh, ice cream. I mean, this is sticky stuff. Um, you know, just a lot of honeydew, very honey flavored as well. Um, just comes off like caramel, butterscotch. I mean, this is going all over the place. Let's go 93 points on this one. Um, it's just getting better and better, and this is an amazing effort. And once again, I don't think too, too expensive. This is not a 500 ml. This is a 187, 187 milliliter bottle, so a small little sampling. And, you know, the kind of thing you can put into your pocket when you go to a football game and pop out and, you know, down it as you're watching your team get annihilated by the New York Jets. Let's move on. This is the king of all. I mean, this is the one that most people know. This is the Inniskillen 2004 Ice Wine, Vidal Ice Wine. So this is one of the kings of all ice wine. Everybody knows Inniskillen. This is probably the one that first turned me onto ice wine six or seven years ago. Um, I mean... That just, I should be arrested for what I just did with this. I mean, this is liquid gold in Canada. People that know this just adore this wine. It's very sought after. It's big time stuff. Comes across tight, a little bit tighter on the nose than the other guys. Let's give it a good whirl. Yeah, it, this one's got a little bit more lemon peel, a little bit more of a lemon peel, no doubt about it. Yeah, wow. Very lemon peel, lemony kind of... Oat. Uh, a little bit of cove, a little bit of four-leaf clover, you know. Tremendous amounts of oranges on the finish. I mean, just very fruit bomb oriented. Little little hint of peach again. Um, very complex, very rich. Um, mango. Wow, that's it. A lot of mango on this finish, a little papaya, very tropical flavors. This has a more acidity, more structure than any of the other wines. It, it seems like a more serious wine. I'm going to score 92 to 94 because I'd like to see where it goes with that. But real high score, I mean, all these wines are tricking the pants off. I mean, you know, I'm going to have to go to the dentist after this episode. So, let's move on. This is a very special one. I've been saving this and I hope you enjoy this. This is the Peller Estates 2004. Cabernet Franc ice wine. Now this I think you should really enjoy. This is also from the Niagara area. Niagara area, excuse me. And uh, this is very, very different. This is made from 100% Cab Franc in the ice wine way. So a red grape doing this. So this is a very different style. This is where a lot of you have never had a wine like this before. I'm having a lot of fun. Let's see what this is going to do. This has a little bit of a mix of jalapeno peppers, broccoli, asparagus, it's coming off extremely vegetal. Very nice. Um, this is really complete and complex of a wine. What is this doing? This is really like, you know, the best way I can take this is broccoli, dipped in honey, eat it. That's the flavors. I mean, you know, sounds weird. It's a complex little thing. But this would go absolutely great with like a key lime pie or some ice cream. This is a very interesting wine, a very interesting drink. It doesn't blow me away. I was kind of really excited for this because I've never had this. It didn't kill me. It's not the favorite thing I've ever had. I'm going to go 90 points, maybe 89 points. And it's pretty expensive. So, you know, I don't know. I think sticking to the white varietals is the way to go for me for today. Um, I have had Inniskillen's Cab Franc in the past, which is pretty expensive, and I've liked it. The Peller is just not killing me. It's nice, and it's very different, and if you've never had it, you may want to seek it out. But I'm going to, you know, 
be a little bit underrated on this. Let's move on. So, I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, this is really, really one of my most exciting episodes. So, questions. Let's answer some questions before we get out of here today. Um, um, Chris Stan says, Gary, do you have any ratings for the Merlot for my spreadsheet? Chris, great spreadsheet. Everybody's talking about it. It's coming out soon. You're talking about yesterday's Merlot. I would go 91 points easy on it. Loved it. Uh, Goal says, echoing Italian Stallion's comment, a little fix is better than none at all. Thanks for the effort, Gary. You're welcome. Question, you tasted over 100 wines. Do you cleanse your palate or just taste and spit straight through? If you cleanse your palate after a bunch of wines, what do you cleanse with and how often? Um, basically, what I'm doing when I taste 100 wines, I had several different meetings. I had lunch in between. I was kind of stopping at 15, 20 at a time. I was pretty much going straight through. Once in a while, I'll cleanse it with a little water, a little bread, but nothing serious. I'm in a place where I feel pretty confident with my palate. I taste a lot of wines. I mean, does it affect me? Sure, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Mike, uh, excuse me, Matthew L. says, will Wine Library email us when the Merlot comes out? A lot of buzz on the Merlot. We will. On the regular email service. So if you're on winelibrary.com's email service, not to do with Wine Library TV, you will get an email once I get that uh, price in place. Also, I got a question. I don't have the person's name. I apologize. That Merlot took a hit because of Sideways, and we know that White Zinfandel is something I don't like, which is true. Here's a question. What do you think is the most unappreciated or dissed varietal? To answer your question, one simple answer. Petite Verdot. Petit Verdot is a grape that's used in Bordeaux and California to give great color to wines. And it's really a great add-on. It's like the workhorse. You know, it's like that guy in the trenches making it happen. Sometimes only 3 to 5% of the blend is Petit Verdot. But I've always been a big fan of it. I've drank a lot of 100% Petit Verdot varietals when I've been out in California and I've really enjoyed them. So they've been a lot of fun. And I really, uh, really, really recommend you uh, seek them out. So, you know, oh, this won't work. God oh, darn it. I was, oh, twist off. How about that? Finally, I'm going to say this. You know, Canadian wines, I love them. You know, Canadian beer. Let's give it an 80, you know. Molson Golden, 81 points. Question of the day. Did dessert wines. What's your favorite dessert wine of all time? Tell me what it is. We're going to have a dessert wine episode coming up soon. We'll see you next time on WLTV.